Number 20, identify the atoms that are oxidized and reduced, the change in the oxidation state for each of them, and then the oxidizing and reducing agents in each of the following equations, and then we have letter B out of the bunch. So, first off, they're already telling me that things are getting oxidized and things are getting reduced, right? So this is a redox reaction. A redox reaction is when you have changes in oxidation states. When we're working with redox reactions, changes in oxidation states, the, the easiest thing or the, the best thing that you can do is find out everybody's charges. It just makes it that much simple or simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find out the individual charges for each atom. So I'll find the charge for phosphorus, chlorine, chlorine, phosphorus, and chlorine. And then we will be able to answer all the questions. So I'm just going to do the work over here. I'm going to work from left to right. So the first compound is PCl3. And remember, when we have a compound, there's definitely some charges or oxidation states, and we use the subscripts to crisscross to get those charges. So I had one phosphorus, there was a secret one, and three chlorines. Use those charges or use those subscripts to crisscross back up. The one told me that each chlorine was a negative one charge, remember? Uh, the one in the back is always negative. That's just standard for a compound. And then the three told me that phosphorus was a plus three. So when this came together, when this compound came together, phosphorus was a plus three and chlorine was a minus one. Now that's why I put this uh, periodic trend over here is just match one of them up and chances are the other one will match <clears throat> or not match, but it will be correct. So for example, chlorine being a minus one, that's a trend, right? Chlorine is over here. It's in group 17 or 7A in which they want to be a negative one charge. So that means that these are correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write them on the top of this compound. Phosphorus was a plus three. Chlorine was a minus one. Okay, moving on. The next one, we got to find the charge for Cl2. But remember... This chlorine all by itself, there's two of them, but this is a diatomic, right? Di means two, atomic, atoms means elements, right? If you don't see any charge in the upper right-hand corner for diatomics, the charge is zero. So chlorine here actually has a zero charge. Now we move on to the next one. This is a compound, so I know that those elements will have uh, charges. And you do it the same way as we did it before, right? There was one phosphorus and five chlorines. Use those subscripts, crisscross them back up. This one told us that the chlorine was a negative one. And this five told me that the phosphorus was now a plus five. So... I could just write it down. P was a plus five and CL was a minus one. And we saw that trend already, so we don't really have to check it. But I'm going to write down that P was a plus five and CL was a minus one. Now we're ready to answer all the questions. That's all the work that you had to do. And now the rest is just categorizing everything. What we're going to do now is we're going to see what oxidation states changed from reactant to the product. So for example, let's see, this phosphorus here went from a plus three to a plus five. You see that? That's a change. I'm going to write that down. So P went from a plus three to a plus five. Okay. Now, let's keep going. This chlorine went from a negative 1 to a negative 1. Was there a, a change here? No. So if there's no change, pay no mind to it. Get rid of it. Let's move on to the next one. Ah, there's this chlorine, though. This chlorine went from a 0 to a minus 1. 
And notice how the end result was the same for both chlorines starting off because you only had one type of chlorine here. So they all have to go to the same one. So now I'm going to put that this Cl started at a zero and it went to a negative one. You just care about the charges. You don't care how many of them you have. You just take the charges that you wrote up on the top. This answers the first question. We're going to find out the atoms, AKA the elements that have been oxidized or reduced. Now, how are we going to know from this change whether phosphorus was oxidized or whether phosphorus was reduced? Come down here. This is everything that you have to know. Remember the mnemonic Leo, the lion, says Gur. L-E-O means loss of electrons is oxidation or being oxidized. On the flip side, Gur, gain of electrons, means reduction or being reduced. Remember that electrons are negative. So if you're losing electrons, you are losing negatives, AKA you're becoming more positive. On the flip side, if you're gaining electrons, um, you're gaining negatives, you're becoming more negative. If you think about it in terms of a number line. So let's see. <clears throat> Phosphorus went from a plus three to a plus five. Are you becoming more positive or are you becoming more negative in this change? Yeah, definitely you're becoming more positive. And becoming more positive is always oxidation. So phosphorus was the one that was being oxidized. That's the answer to the first part. So on the flip side, if one is oxidized, the other one's got to be reduced. But let's just see that it makes sense. The chlorine went from a zero to a negative one. Is it becoming more positive or more negative? Oh yeah, definitely more negative. So I'll put that there, more negative. So that means that that has to be reduced. So the atom that was being oxidized was phosphorus. The atom that was being reduced is chlorine. So that answers the first part. And now we did the second part, the change in oxidation state. Well, Phosphorus started off as a plus three and it changed to a plus five. Chlorine started off as a zero and it changed to a negative one. So that's what they mean by that, just showing you the change. And now we just have to find out the oxidizing and reducing agents. So quick things here. If you're undergoing oxidation, you are the reducing agent. The wording gets flipped. If you are undergoing reduction, you are actually the oxidizing agent. Now, the rule of thumb here is that oxidizing agents and reducing agents, maybe I'll just put it like over here, it's both oxidizing and reducing, but these are always your reactants. They can never be the products. So this would never be an answer. PCL5, bye-bye. And now we have a nice little setup, right? One of them out of the two is going to be the oxidizing agent. The other one is going to be reduced or the reducing agent. But we kind of already answered it. The phosphorus, which was the one that was oxidized, oxidation, should be coming from the reducing agent. So if that's the case, so maybe I could just like, actually, Actually, I think we got this right. If the phosphorus one was being oxidized, the compound that it came from, you have to write the whole compound, is the reducing agent. So PCl3 would be the reducing agent because the P, the phosphorus that we figured it out, was being oxidized. And if you know one of them, you know the other one, right? If this is the reducing agent, this has to be the oxidizing agent. But let's just see if it makes sense. So oxidizing agent, and it's the one that is being uh, reduced. But the chlorine in it was the one that's being reduced. So they kind of go together.
But just know that when you're doing oxidizing agents and reducing agents, it's the whole compound. You have to say the whole compound. Okay, guys? And maybe I'll just put over here just for your note's sake that that chlorine was the one that was being reduced. So the wording just gets flip-flopped. And that's the answers. So a lot of answers in this one. Just make sure that you categorize all of them <clears throat> and just state them all. But they're all here. Okay? So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That will help us out. Um, did I forget anything? No. I hope you guys have a awesome, awesome, awesome day. Keep studying hard. And I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.